What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome back to Electronics episode 20. Today we will be learning about a very important electronics component, the diode. Diodes will allow us to properly utilize many other electronics components and can help us when using capacitors in a simple circuit that we're going to build a little bit later on in this video. Now we have heard of a diode before. LED stands for a light emitting diode, so in fact an LED is a type of diode. Now a diode essentially only allows current to flow in one specific direction, which is why we must connect an LED, or any type of diode for that matter, in a circuit the proper way around. So diodes have an anode and a cathode that must be connected in the proper order and position within a circuit. Now, for the remainder of this tutorial series, and for nearly all electronics work that you're going to find on the internet or just in general life, conventional current flow will be used. This is used to help reduce confusion. Conventional current flow is basically just think of all things electronics going from positive to negative, or from the anode to a cathode. So electricity, think of electricity traveling from positive to negative whenever we are discussing any type of electronics or electricity flow or current flow. Conventional current, like I said, is used to reduce confusion, which is especially important when we're talking about diodes. So just think of current and electricity flowing from positive to negative. All right, now the schematic symbol for a diode is actually just a simpler version of the schematic symbol for an LED. It's this triangle with a line on it, and that's the schematic symbol for a regular diode. Now there are other types of diodes, but for this video, we are just going to focus on a regular kind of standard normal diode. Now the anode is sort of at the base of this triangle here, that's the anode, and where this line is drawn right here, that is the cathode, and I'm just going to circle those there. Now a diode allows current to flow from the anode to the cathode, so it allows current to flow in that direction there. However, if current begins to try to flow in the opposite direction from the cathode to the anode, then the diode is going to do its best work, and it's going to try its hardest to stop this current from flowing any further past the diode. So essentially, whenever current tries to flow the opposite way in a diode, the diode kind of makes the circuit like an open switch would. Like there's almost no connection there. At least, that's what an ideal diode would do. Except it should allow current to flow regularly from the anode to the cathode. So let's take a look at a very basic schematic involving a diode. And we are actually going to start with something very familiar, sort of our regular LED basic circuit here. So we're going to take the positive side of the battery there. And we're going to wire it up beginning at a resistor, and then this resistor is going to go ahead and connect to an LED, a light emitting diode, which sort of has the two arrows coming off of it. So we have our LED there, and I'm not really going to focus on this type of diode, I'm going to focus on a regular diode, so that might get a bit confusing. But we have the LED there, and then we are also going to have a diode pointing right after the LED, connecting up to the negative side of the battery. So since the diode is placed sort of in this configuration, current should flow right from the positive terminal of the battery through the LED lighting it up, and it'll be able to pass right through the diode to the other end of the battery because, again, the diode allows current to flow in this direction towards the line of the diode schematic symbol. So this circuit should work just as it would regularly even without this extra diode here. Whenever a diode allows current to flow through it in the proper direction, this is something called forward, and let me write it here, forward bias. That means the diode is in forward bias operating mode. It's allowing current to flow through. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's go ahead and remove this extra diode right there, okay? And instead, let's place that diode the opposite way around and I drew this kind of weird. So there we now have our diode placed in the other direction. So what's gonna happen here? Well, current is going to begin to try to flow through the resistor, through the LED, and then it's going to get to this diode here. And this diode is going to stop the current from flowing, and it's gonna act sort of like a switch was open, and the LED isn't gonna light up, and our circuit is essentially not going to work because the diode does not allow current to flow through in this opposite direction here because we placed it the other way around. Now whenever a diode is preventing current from flow, this is called uh, reverse bias there. That is when the diode is in reverse bias operating mode. It won't allow current to flow through. 
Now, in a perfect world, a diode would work just like this with no problems at all. However, in the real world, diodes do have limits to them. All diodes have a voltage limit. So if a diode has a 10 volt voltage limit, and you try to pass 20 volts in the wrong direction on the diode, then the diode is going to break. And there's actually an operating mode, sort of like forward bias and reverse bias. It's called breakdown mode. So whenever you pass too much voltage the opposite way through a diode like this, it essentially breaks down and it no longer is successful at stopping current from flowing the other direction. Basically, you have broken your diode. And that's something that you want to avoid doing. So it's important to use the properly rated diode whenever you're doing electronics work. Also, all diodes in real life have a forward voltage or a voltage drop just like an LED or a resistor has. For example, my LED uses up about 3 volts, so it takes away 3 volts from the rest of the circuit. Now, regular diodes also have a voltage drop. So if a diode has a, say, 2 volt voltage drop, then if we just try passing 1.5 volts in the proper direction, then not really anything is going to happen because there's not enough voltage to power up the diode correctly, and there's just not enough power there. So in that case, you would need more than 2 volts to pass through the diode and to actually get current to flow through the circuit. So in a perfect world, a diode would have no forward voltage, you can just pass through any amount of electricity, but in the real world, diodes do have voltage limits, and they do have voltage drops, meaning that you need to provide enough voltage for it to actually work. Now let's get to what a diode looks like, how to place it properly, and do some testing on a diode so we can actually see what a diode does in a circuit. And we'll also see how we can use a diode with a capacitor. Now all diodes of course look a little bit different, but one of the most common type or styles of diodes rather will look something like this. It looks similar to a resistor, it might have a bit smoother of a body, but as you can see here it has a few numbers written on it so we can tell what it is and it has a little stripe at one end, a different colored stripe at one end of the diode here. So, if we take a look at this, the end with the stripe, this silver stripe here, that is the cathode. So this lead right here towards the stripe is called the cathode, and the anode is on the opposite end of the diode. So that's how you can tell which end or which lead is the anode and which lead is the cathode on a diode. It's by that little stripe right there. So it's very important to pay attention to what the anode and cathode is on the diode here. Now I have a very basic circuit set up, just an LED and a resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this diode and I'm going to connect the striped end or the cathode end into the negative power rail of my breadboard here. And I'm going to plug in the anode or the more positive end of the diode into the resistor to complete the circuit. So if I go ahead and do that, as you can see, the LED lights brightly up. So while that's working nice and dandy for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my multimeter here, and I'm going to make sure that I can measure voltage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my black uh, multimeter probe to this side of the diode, and my positive multimeter probe to the other side of the diode. So we are going to measure the voltage drop, or the voltage going across the diode. Now remember, in a perfect world, a diode would have zero volts of voltage drop, but of course, in the real world here, all diodes have some type of voltage drop, voltage that it takes away from the circuit. And as you can see, this diode is drawing about 0.735 volts as its voltage drop. So that is how many volts that it's taking away from our circuit, which isn't too bad because, hey, our LED is still lighting up, that is fine. And just out of curiosity, let's just take a look and see how much voltage uh, my LED here is taking up in the circuit, so let me attach my probes to the LED instead, like so, and my LED is drawing about 3.2 volts as a voltage drop. That's how much voltage that my LED is using. Alright, so let me turn off my multimeter, and let me unplug these multimeter probes here. Now let's take a look at what happens if we remove the diode, and place the diode in the opposite direction. So I'm going to attach the cathode, the end with the stripe, to the resistor instead this time, and the other end to the negative power rail on my breadboard. Now you'll notice how the LED slightly lights up there, that's only because my two fingers are touching the leads. But if I completely let go of it, the LED is 100% turned off. The diode is doing its job and it's not allowing any current to flow through the circuit whatsoever which is quite obvious because, well, our LED is not lighting up anymore. So let's go ahead and try to still measure our voltage. So let me go ahead and hook up 
the probes once more to the diode and turn this on to voltage reading on my multimeter here. Now my diode is drawing about 6.7 volts across it, which is much larger than the less than one volt that it was drawing earlier. So the voltage going across this diode is much, much more because it's now in reverse bias operating mode. It's not allowing current to flow. So if we take a look at the voltage going across the LED now, and we do that, then we will see that the voltage going across the LED is in the millivolts range. It's reading, well, it's quite sporadic right now, but it's about, I'd say, 200 millivolts running across the LED, which is nowhere near 3 volts that it was reading earlier. So that diode definitely had an effect on the circuit voltage-wise, but it is doing its job and it's preventing the LED from turning on. So let me take my multimeter here, and I'm going to make sure that I can measure amperage. So I'm going to move my red probe to the 10 amp slot into my multimeter. This way we are able to measure amps. And before we do this, remember that measuring amps is much different than measuring voltage. We have to make sure that the multimeter becomes a part of the circuit. So I'm going to disconnect my diode from the resistor there and just put it over here. And to make the multimeter a part of my circuit, I'm going to attach one probe to this side of the resistor and the other probe to this side of the diode so it completes the circuit for us. I'll go ahead and turn my multimeter into amp reading mode. And as you can see, going through this circuit right now is zero amps. Now in reality, there is probably a very tiny amount of current going through the circuit, but not enough to do anything really to our LED or turn anything on. So we're just going to go by what the multimeter says, and it says that the diode is doing its job. There is no current going through this circuit. Great, let's try the same thing, except let's reverse the diode back around to the proper position. So now the diode should be, if I can get it plugged in here, the diode is now in the proper orientation. So if I connect up my multimeter to the diode, we can see that the LED lights up again because it's in the proper position. It's in forward bias operating mode now. And there is current running through our circuit, about 0.024 amps. So the diode is now allowing current to flow because it's in the right direction. So hopefully that was a nice easy way to visualize exactly what our diode does within our circuit here. Now before I end today's video, let's make a really quick circuit involving a capacitor and a diode. Alright, so here I have a fairly simple circuit involving a diode, capacitor, LED, and a resistor, and the schematic for that is on the screen right now. Now this is a 1000 microfarad capacitor that I'm using, but you can experiment with different values of capacitance. Now first things first, why do we need this diode here? Well, technically we don't need a diode there. Technically we can just hook uh, both the terminals of the uh, capacitor and the resistor right up to the positive power line and it would work just the same way. However, having this diode here is called a protection diode. So basically, if we hook up the power incorrectly and we accidentally reverse the polarity of our power rails, the circuit won't get damaged, the LED won't get damaged. Of course, it won't work because the power is connected the wrong way, but this diode prevents us from accidentally damaging our circuit if the power reverses polarity. So you could technically just use a plain old wire in place of the diode there, but since this is a video on diodes, we're going to use a diode. Okay, so let me go ahead and connect the power. And as you can see, the LED lights up as we would expect, but if I disconnect the power, the LED stays lit and slowly dims down. So let me connect it again, and then disconnect it, and the LED slowly begins to dim. And this is, of course, because of this capacitor right here. As we plug the circuit in, it both powers the LED, and it also begins to charge up the capacitor. So it eventually becomes almost fully charged, so that way when we disconnect the power, this capacitor is able to drive current through this circuit because of the potential difference within the capacitor that we talked about in the last video. Now I'm going to take this 1000 microfarad capacitor out, and instead I'm going to replace it with a 100 microfarad capacitor. So let me plug this right into the circuit in the proper orientation because electrolytic capacitors have to be oriented in the proper way, of course. So if I put that in the breadboard there, and I now connect the power once more, the LED lights up, but if I disconnect it, 
The LED still dims down, but it's much, much faster because this has a lower capacitance rating, so it can't keep the LED on as long as this larger 1000 microfarad capacitor. So the larger the capacitor, essentially, the more time we are able to keep that LED on. And this diode right here protects the circuit from any incorrect power. So instead, if I take my power source and I plug the negative into the power uh, into the positive power rail, and if I plug the positive into the negative power rail, and let me do that right here, as you can see, nothing happens to our circuit because that diode is protecting the circuit from being damaged. But if I connect the power the correct way again, everything works as expected. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.